No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm in here with one of the most requested guests in recent memory. We got Sharp, <laughs> formerly of Soft White Underbelly. I guess currently of. He'll probably currently. make some more appearances, right? Currently? I don't know, maybe. You're not sure? Not sure. Damn, Mark robbed you the wrong way? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 man. That would be just, a tragedy if I heard that. Just moving fast. I mean, I just, you know. Just doing other things, man. Just trying to move on, you know? Right. Keep keep pushing. So give the people a little bit of an idea of how you ended up on Software Underbelly, what the introduction was there. Ah, uh, fucking skeptical. Because <laughs> <laughs> you had never done anything like that Fuck on camera no. necessarily? Fuck okay. no. Fuck no. I ain't never did none of that shit, man. Shit, I, most I ever did was fucking record myself or fucking sitting there, you know, in a car or something. I ain't never fucking went and sat amongst some fucking cameras and this man started asking me questions about my life, you mm. know? And I was standoffish at first. Like, I didn't fucking know him. You know what I'm saying? Like, how it all started, man, was I got a call from my buddy. He was like, hey, man, uh, this dude, man, he's uh, he's doing these interviews, you know? And I did it as a favor to my to my boy, you know? he It's my guy, so I, I fuck with him. So mm. he was like, man, come down. Uh, come shoot it with me, you know, get some money, you know, you can sit down, man, just just tell him your story, man, just tell him, you know, where you came from, you know, how you came up, and I was like, all right, you know, so I went and did some research on him real quick, and I started seeing, man, some real, you know, some real fucked up people, man, he was interviewing, you know what I mean? I mean? If you look at the channel, his most viewed videos are like inbred family, you know, Fucking crazy, prostitutes man. with their whole face falling off, like crazy <laughs> shit, like, like, if you look at the stuff that's the most viewed, you would have a certain perspective, but when we were doing that interview, I kept kind of like saying like, oh, you know, you, you run a YouTube channel where you interview homeless people, and he, he wants to jump in and be like, not necessarily, you know, I interview a whole wide array of people, those are just some of the interviews that get the most attention. I mean, listen, man, when I went and did that shit, I didn't expect any of that, man. At first, when I started seeing all the negative comments and shit was coming, I said, man, Mark, fuck you, man. I'll give you your money back and take that shit down. Oh, really? You know, I swear to you, man. At first, I was like, man, I don't know. I don't think I want to let anybody in that deep. You know, I was skeptical of, man. He's sitting in front of this white man. He's asking me all these questions. You know, I'm answering them to him as best as I can. You know, I didn't really know him. But as we, we carried on, the first one did numbers, man, and... I think in a month, man, we hit a million on it. Mm. Hit a million in a month. You know, I didn't expect that shit, bro. I don't, I don't, I don't come from that. I don't, I'm not a social media fucking freak. You know, <laughs> right. at the time, like my shit was private, man. I only had fucking 800 followers six months ago, five months ago, or seven months, some shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I just getting into it, man. Like we just start developing a friendship, man. And I came back the second one. I opened up a little bit more to him. I start seeing, okay, he's opening up with me. I come back, I do another one with him. We open up just a little bit more and we developed a friendship, man. Mm. You know, I, I, he did he don't look at me as, you know, oh, you know, he's fucked up. He looks at me as an intelligent individual. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we've had full blown heart to heart conversations, man. So, you know, I'm not lacking in that department on him, you know, and he kind of saw it. So he just, he just wanted to tap in a little bit more. Mm. So, and that's how we kind of got to it. And then shit just kind of start flourishing from there, man. I didn't expect that shit. People were talking bad, man, but mm. then they start talking good. You know, it's kind of like that, right? I guess, you know, it always starts with some bullshit, but then they don't see it. They kind of miss it. Mm. Well, people see you having very much like the gift of gab and really being able to I think people see you being such a smooth operator there that they can then sort of put the pieces of the puzzle together and be like, oh, this is how he coerces people into doing <laughs> things that they wouldn't otherwise want to do, which I could see it. I could see you, you know, very much like talking somebody out of their last five bucks. Hey, man, I wouldn't. Hey, I'd give a person my last five. Mm, you know, okay. I'm not a person. Listen, man, I ain't trying to ever talk anybody out of anything. Mm. That's never what I had gotten to the game for, man, when I was in it. You know, everything was by choice, man. Nothing's by force, you know, nobody's fucking with. See, that's where they get the game fucked up at. Mm. And that's what I try to talk to Mark about, you know. That's, that's where they get the game fucked up at, man. Real ones ain't fucking with little kids and mm. sending little kids and sex trafficking, man. That, that's, that's not what's going on, man, for people who's really playing it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like there's too, there's too many. You have to think about it, man. This game, it used to be, it's, like I said, a secret society. Now you got everybody trying to fucking play it. You don't really know who's who. Mm. You know, so you get all these mixtures of people. And, you know, I see the people, they're just getting fucking pissed. They're just like, fuck it, man. We'll just give everybody 30, 40, 50 years. You know, they're giving out, man, for shit that they'd slap a bitch on the hand, man, and send her back out to jail the next day. Mm. You can't even act like you're doing something like that, man. I, I've interviewed rappers who, yeah, you know, it, it, overall, in terms of all the rappers I interview, mm -hmm. I would say that the ones who have a history of pimping are so not down to talk about it in comparison to like the dudes who want to talk about shootings who want to talk about selling huge amounts of drugs 
they're kind of down to talk about that. That's not that doesn't seem like as big a deal. But the dudes who I I, I know really have a history in terms of pimping are like, no, I'm not talking about it because it's like they've all been scared straight of of the law coming down on them, or or even I've seen dudes who been written about in articles where all of a sudden they flip the switch and it's like, oh no, they're, they're referring to this dude as a sex trafficker. They're talking about him like he's a real piece of shit and not just a, a guy who was making money on the street. Man, listen, that's where it's, it's getting more and more fucked up, man, because see, they don't, they don't portray what's, what's good in it. It's always what's bad. That's what you'll see on the news. Mm. That's what they're going to put on the news. They're always going to put these bad, man. These are fucking some i think a lot of these dudes use the game man as a crutch man they really do like to to beat a bitch or mm. to you know what i'm saying fucking like i said water border like it's fucking guantanamo bay mm. you know what i'm saying they use all these like to, oh it's, i'm doing this to you because i'm pipping no like i said you're fucking sick bro you're trip you're tripping the fuck out you need to go get some some self-help mm. you know that that's not what the game is based on man these these, these listen to me man these women are doing this all by choice. If the, if Pippin or the, if, if it never existed, if it never existed, man, these bitches are still going to do the same motherfucking thing tomorrow. Mm. It's not going to change. And if it didn't exist, it would be reinvented tomorrow. Like if it's somehow everything about it was stripped away from society, you're always going to have women who are wanting to sell their bodies and you're always going to have women who basically need to enlist guys to help them with this process because there's a lot of risk associated with it that realistically only a guy is going to be able to help cure you know what I, you know what i think of only fans what i think only fans is for bitches who they want the whole dough but they don't want the they don't want the label they don't want the notoriety of it mm. you know only fans is a very vague way of home but not i am not you know Bitch, yeah. stop. If you're going to do it, fucking go do it. The yeah. fuck is wrong? But I that, don't get it. On a different level, though, you could go be an escort and never have your parents back in Kansas ever find out. Whereas Very if you true. become an OnlyFans girl, realistically, somebody's going to fucking DM your mom somebody's and Somebody's going to DM and let you know that they were looking at your titties. They were, you know what I'm saying? They right. tried to get a date to come suck on your nipples. You right. know? I mean, it, it, it gets raw on there because it's more, that, that shit's not secret. It was just out there. Like I said, OnlyFans, what the fuck, man? OnlyFans, TikTok. These people done fucking took the shit over man these were kids sites mm. these were shits the kids were doing tiktoks and doing shit like that now you got grown-ass women that have no life or these grown-ass men that have no life man like fucking go do something with yourself but but your previous occupation is basically yeah. like the fucking you know the store in the mall selling cds and now they got <laughs> spotify only fans is fucking spotify and it's very it's a very like a lot of people would suggest that the the business model that you presumably have been involved with in the past was is kind of outdated and might not even have a, a future in this world what would you say to that man i'll be honest with you man uh, it's definitely a dying culture because mm. it was a culture man it was it was something as, as real as this room bro from when i saw it you know what i'm saying when i was in the game bro like it it was exciting to wake up Get dressed and don't know what your night's going to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? Don't know how your night's going to come, whether it's going to be a dollar or a million. Mm. You know, it was it was uh, more in depth. It, it had more meaning. Now it's just like you just got a whole bunch of people just playing it just to be playing it just to say they, they're doing something. Mm. You know, and I think that's anything now. You know, that people try to – everything's turning into a fad. Mm. Things turning into a style. It's not something you had to do or – something that you kind of came up into you mm. know it's just it's more of a joke it's a it's a laughing matter right well you know i was interviewing a, a battle rapper uh the other day and we were having this conversation and he was talking about how when he was coming up in hip-hop and w when whatnot it was really about being outside it was yeah. about being on the fucking corner and you were battling different dudes and really just being around that energy and now it's about making content. It's about like, oh, if we're going to do a battle rap, we got to figure out who's getting paid X amount of dollars and we're going to figure out what streaming service is going to carry and everything. Because now, if you want to get your message out to a lot of people, 
you kind of got to like broadcast that information to the internet. And I kind of see what you're saying as being similar where you used to like that feeling of going out and spending the night, getting into God knows what hustling, really like being a part of the city and stuff. And now so much stuff has moved online and it's just kind of with you. I fuck right? with you when you, when you say that, Adam, like you say, uh, you know, like it was more being outside. It was, if for anything, it was word of mouth. Hmm. It was word of mouth. You had to hear about, oh damn, you know, this happened, that happened. Now today, man, you can, get on the line at a click of a button mm. and see whatever the fuck you need to see, you know, no matter how good or bad. Right. You know, it's, there's no, there's no limits anymore, man. I think social media done fucked it all up, man. That's why these kids don't know shit today. Right. That's why they're fucked up, bro. They don't go outside. They don't hurt themselves no more. They go hop in their mama's fucking medicine cabinet and do dirty. Mm. <laughs> I think about that all the time. If I were to like, if I were to let my kid when she's like of, you know, once my kid's 12, if I were to let her do all the shit that I was doing when I was 12, like going off on our bikes, riding around town, getting into fights, hanging out in the woods, doing God knows what, people would look at me like as a fucking, I was a crazy person for letting my kid have that much freedom that was totally normal when I was a kid. Right. These kids are kept in a fucking box now because everybody's so scared of what could happen. And I, I guess I don't blame them because realistically, like with the media and shit, they, they keep reminding you of every worst case scenario. <clears throat> well, let's say this. You got to fucking give the kids a chance to grow, man. Let them mm. bump their fucking heads. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's the problem. Everybody always wants to shelter them. Ooh. Oh, I don't want my kid to see that, but your kid's seeing everything on the fucking internet anyway. Let mm. them outside and let them go fucking bump their heads. Let them go live a little. Right. Fucking pop the titty out of their mouth. <laughs> Stop babying them, man. Yeah. Fucking show them we might have some more decent people in the world. Right. For real, man. They can call me a scumbag. They can call for whatever. My Hey, fuck you. Dead ass serious, bro. I'm, I don't give a fuck. At least I'm one of the ones that still stand for something. Mm. I come from the old school game, bro. I don't I don't do any of this new shit, this new booty shit. This shit's funny style to me. Right. Like I said, it's all it's all a fad. It's turned into all it's a style, man. And it's just turned into something to laugh at. It's so interesting to me because you seem like you're somebody who always or let me know if you were always, but you were very much obsessed with the culture of it and that was what you know, you had a real reverence for that, which a lot of people wouldn't think that bro, I can't, would be a big like, part I'm, of it. I'm being dead ass serious with you, bro. I came in this game when I was 14, 15. And you know, back in the day, like, and I'm, I'm gonna say this, man, and I'm, I'm sure motherfuckers can agree with me on this, <clears throat> that that came from, from just back then. You never really, you never really met a bunch of motherfuckers that was just doing a whole bunch of shit. If you were pimping, you were pimping. If you were selling drugs, you were selling drugs. If mm. you were gang banging, you were gang banging. If you were, do, you were true to what you do. Mm. Now it's so many slashes, you know, and people want, a hundred, they, they put 10% into this one and 20% into that one and 30% into this one, but they expect 100% out of each one. You're not going to get that. Mm. If you, like I say, if you want 100% out, man, you're going to have to put 100% in. Mm. That's the only way, man. You got to put 100% in. But don't you feel, when you say 100% in, don't, like a big part of it for you is like, an image and like you know presenting yourself in a certain way. I think a lot of people have the same reaction where they're like, "No, nah, man, it's, wearing it, crazy nah. outfits and fur coats and shit nah, is going to get you caught up." Fuck that. <laughs> Doing it even when you don't want to do it the days you don't want to get up, man, mm. and still mashing. That's what makes it meaningful. Mm. See, motherfuckers ain't going to say that, bro. They ain't going to tell the truth on that one. That's what the game really stands for. Is can you get up the days that you don't want to get up? Not just do it for the weekend, but you got to wake up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Fuck it. Look forward to next Wednesday. Shit, fuck that weekend. That's already sold up. Next week, you just, it's, it's you don't, it doesn't let you go once you're really in, man, you know? And I think that's anything that you do. You can stop tomorrow. Yeah, granted, but that's still your mentality. Mm. Does that make sense? You can fucking, you know what I'm saying, fucking be fucking big porn star fucking whatever. <laughs> Let's just say allegedly, oh, right? Yeah, sure. Hey, man, you still know the business. Yeah. You'll still always know the business walking away from it tomorrow. Right. It'll never, they, that, they, that can, they can never take that knowledge from you, man. Right. That's why I try to say, like, it's always you. It'll always be you. But in a way, with, like, the porn stuff, you know, I, I do it, and you know, you we, we 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 line up. Fun? Oh, that's fun. But we Is line up fun? shoots. You know, sometimes it's me, sometimes it's other people. Whatever. I got a name for you. You know what you you know what you're uh, uh -oh. you know what I classify you as for that. Here we go. A professional dicksman. Mm, I you can like see that. It, yeah. 
Like that? Yeah. Fucking yeah. professional. You never dicks, thought about getting gotta, in that game? You got it. Listen, man, I think you'd be all right at it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You just got that Mr. Professional Dixman's face. Right. Like, hey, I'm Tom. You ready for me to... I'm but but when I look at all the all the other dudes who do porn, I'm like, bro, like they, I don't know what the fuck they think of me because I'm so obviously like a YouTube slash podcaster slash whatever the fuck I am who just kind of mm. saw an opening mm. to get money and, mm. and slid in there. A lot of these people, I feel like they're way more perverted than me. And I feel like they kind of might look down on me like, oh, he's just a normie ass dude who's in this to get money. Yeah. Are you? Was, yeah. <laughs> I feel it. Be honest. Man. I'm into it's, a lot of shit. I wouldn't say that porn speaks yeah, to my soul more right. than you know. I've been riding BMX bikes since I was 12. Yeah. Till, till you know, I stopped really a couple years ago. But like yeah. you know, that shit that I've been in love with since I was a kid. Hip hop, yeah. I've been in love with since I was a kid. Yeah. Have I been in love with fucking bitches since I was a kid? Yes, sure. But am I like committed to like? Is that what I wake up in the morning thinking like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make some fire porn. No, it's like a opening you know I found in is. to do some business. You know what it is? You grow. You mm -hmm. know, somebody can have a problem with you, right? Ten, ten years ago, some shit could have happened. Mm. Twenty years ago, some shit could have happened. And you don't even run into this person. They bring it back up to you. They, they harbor this and they say, man, I remember when you did this. No, nah, fuck that. Adam's this type of motherfucker. He ain't no real motherfucker. Bro, you're not the same person you were 20 years ago. You're not the same person you were six months ago. We grow every day. Mm. People got to start seeing it like we grow every day, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? So all you're doing is just growing. Yeah. That's why you kind of left some of them things probably behind. The, not even saying you don't love it anymore. You just surpass that. Mm. There is that, that, that shit is true when they say there's levels to this shit, man, and there's levels to your life. Mm. There's levels to your life, my man. Just follow forward, man. Don't look back on anything. Don't regret shit. I don't give a fuck what it was, bro. I don't give a fuck how bad it is. I don't give a fuck if it was your de deepest, darkest secrets. Mm. Shit you've never told nobody, bro. Don't look back, bro. Fuck that shit. Keep moving. Yeah, you gotta Move keep Move forward, moving. bro. That's the thing about being 37. Yeah. Is that I feel like I already like lived a whole life. And yeah. now I got like a second life. Yeah. Like when I think about the girls I went to high school with, mm. I wouldn't look twice at any of them. Probably half of them are dead. Let's be real. Fuck. A lot of heroin where I grew up. Yeah. Probably grew up? New Hampshire. New Hampshire? A lot of fentanyl overdoses. <sighs> It ain't my problem. Fuck, but man. I mean, I'm just saying. These. Did you? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm like, if I were to go through my high school yearbook and be able to see an updated photo, yeah, it would not be looking good. Yeah, I'm still living with a lot of passion and intensity, and I feel like you know, I was a, I was a chunky little kid. You were, but I, but you know what, bro? I had bitches. Mm. I had bitches. Why 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 do you think that was? Most guys, it's like impossible to I get laid. I don't know. Like maybe it's because I don't know. I was a light skinned dude, man. You know. Never could be too much black, never could be too much white, you know? So once I start seeing I'm getting hated on over here, man, I'm gonna just go get with the bitches. Mm. And that's what I start doing, man. I just start having girlfriends and just fucking with girls, man. That's what I was around. So you weren't like black enough to be with the gangbangers and you weren't white oh, enough no. to be with the as solar panel older, experts or I what? I mean, this was with my younger years, you know what okay. I'm saying? Like as I got older, I mean, shit, I was able to speak for myself, move for myself, motherfuckers knew what it was. You know, I'm not I wasn't the hardest motherfucker, but I'm not just going to let nobody fuck with me or roll over me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but like I said as I came up, man, shit, I had girls in 6th grade. Shit. Remember, man, I remember in fucking 4th grade this girl her daddy owned a jewelry store, man. And I remember it was Valentine's Day and I was like, "Yeah, bring me something." She went into her her daddy's jewelry store, bro. That's fine. And grabbed a fucking chain up out of that motherfucker and brought it to me to school, bro. Right. She wrapped it up and everything. Wow. Damn, she was crafty. Damn. She's fucking crap. You didn't have to one. do a whole lot of, like, finessing to get her to want to do such a thing, to betray her father for you? No. I'm in fourth grade, bro. The most <laughs> I could fucking offer is a juice box or a fucking chocolate milk, bro. Right. Maybe a sticky bun, my extra one that I stole already out of the cafeteria. Right. There's not really much I can give her. Uh -huh. I got a dollar. Uh, but I'm going to get some hot Cheetos from the snack stand with that shit. My version of that when I was like 13, 14 is that I knew a girl who worked at KFC mm -hmm. and me and the homies would get her to sneak food for us out the back door. Let me tell you something, man. Taking advantage of those natural resources no, is important to, was, to learn. No, nah, bro. Hey, when we was young, shit, man, we used to have a couple of homegirls. We'd go over there when their daddy and their mama wasn't gone, man, we eat all their shit. <laughs> I don't know, he's probably think they're dark, you little fat bitch. You're eating up all this food. <laughs> we over there tearing the motherfucking freezers up, church. Over there snatching the motherfuckers reckless. Right. Straight up. And we taking shit to go barbecue. Right. They got it in there, it's gone. Your mama and them on the way. Well, come on, we're going over to Wishman calling them house, man. We're gonna go ahead and do it up over there. For sure. 
all the way. <laughs> I mean, that's how you know. That, that's how you know you're gonna make it in life is if you're crafty yeah. enough. Like I realized, young, like, oh, if I cannot spend ten dollars on food today just because I have a couple of relationships with different people who work at these restaurants in my yeah. area, that's me saving X amount of dollars. And I always knew that as a kid. Like I gotta figure out how to live my life as inexpensively as possible, mostly by scamming and stealing. And like, like it's interesting that you said that you were so drawn to working with women early on because I felt like that about stealing. So From day mean, one, I was so, taking shit. So does shit. that mean, so listen to this, right? So does that mean that just like they would say about people being born gay, because they say, I was born like this? I think you were born like this. You get what I'm saying? Mm. You have Damn. the personality type, don't you Damn. think? Is a circle a square, a square circle? I mean, really, let's look at it. <laughs> We're just, I mean, fuck. What, what's really, you know what I'm saying? What's really what? Right. What's really what in the world? This is shit they classify it as, man. What if the shit's all backwards? Uh -huh. What if we got it all wrong, Adam? Uh, it's possible. Light something up, man. Get high. What are you doing? You got a cigarette? You need a cigarette? I don't want to smoke weed while I'm on camera. I'm going to get a little too, uh, I got to do two more of these after this. Fuck, bro. I know, it's well, a grind. Well, you can at least, hey, this one will last you at least through. Bro, I seen you with that pack of cools. You need to, come on, bro. <laughs> come on, man. Fucking just in my shit, bro, man. Bro, if I face a blunt right now, it's going to be a whole different type of podcast. I'm going to get a little slow. My eyes are going to slow. You know, I, I like man, to choose. You got a seven gram blunt right I there. I know, and I appreciate that very much. A Thank you for this. seven gram blunt. My man, friend. hey, if, if y'all thought that Sharp was a stingy type of guy, you're wrong, because he came through. With the most dramatic blunt, we're gonna smoke this. <laughs> we're gonna smoke this on the podcast tonight at six and see see what it's hitting for. Yeah, do it. I'm not doing it right now though. That's yeah, a little no, much. for sure, man. Yeah. For sure. No, I appreciate that, bro. For real. Yeah, man. Like I said, I just uh, I, I'm just trying to move in life, man. You know, I'm I'm a very down to earth individual. You know, despite anybody's feelings from my backgrounds, you know, mm -hmm. I really. Don't give a fuck about We might be jumping shit. ahead a little bit here, but through doing the stuff with Softball Underbelly and stuff, are you kind of seeing like the vision of what you could be potentially? Because people like seeing you talk so much. Have you thought about like, maybe I should have my own show. Maybe I should have my own series on YouTube, et cetera. Uh, you know, man, I do, uh, I do uh, every Sunday, I do a church on a Sunday, man. I don't be looking for no, no profits or nothing, man. You know, I just bring people, you know, people from all over the world come fuck with me, man. It's crazy. It's fucking crazy. I'm talking about from fucking Ireland, UK, Saudi Arabia, and India, fucking just places you wouldn't even imagine, man. Mm. Like they just come through and they just chime in with me, man. This fucking girl, bro, she named her baby after me in the Philippines. Wow. You know what the baby's name is? She showed me the birth certificate, bro. Showed the birth certificate. Like literally, she was on, I was on fucking church on a Sunday. I'm doing a show. Mm -hmm. I'm dead ass serious. I'm doing a show, right? And this Filipino girl come on, man. And I swear to God, bro, she, you know how they are. She act like she sees Michael Jackson. Like, <laughs> oh my God, like, it's the best thing she's ever, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. she's fucking tripping out on me like I'm fucking Michael, like I'm baby Michael. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He, I don't know. She's tripping. Mm. And she was like, I, and she told me, she, she calmed down. I said, calm down, it's cool. And she was like, I just want to let you know that I named my son after you. And she was like, his name is Sharp. Le Levi, Sharp Levi is his name. From fucking here, from the Philippines, man. Wow. And she had sent me a picture of the birth certificate, and sure fuck enough, her son's Sharp. <laughs> right. It looks like you? Or? Uh, no, fuck no. <laughs> fuck about the Philippines. <laughs> fuck if I've been to the Philippines. I thought man. it might have been a twist where maybe it was your kid or but, something. But, bro, honestly, it's just shit like that, man. People just start, just start going live one day, bro. People couldn't even find me, like, even after the first interview, man. Mm. I never, because that was never my, my purpose. You know, people were like, man, I'm having a hard time finding this guy's fucking social media. He is not there, mm. you know, and then just I did the second one and I just opened up my Instagram one day, bro. And from like 900 followers, and shit, we sent it almost 40 today after like six months. Mm. I mean, just naturally, organically, man, I'm not buying anything. I'm not. That's not my forte, man. That's not the shit I'm into. You know, I'm into real life. Mm. That's why I fuck with real people. And that's why I tell them every, every Sunday, man, we're going to get through this shit together, man. And sometimes a lot of people, man, I've had people come on there and say, man, shit, I was, I was thinking about committing suicide. And you stopped me. Really? You helped me. I swear, man, I'll shit you not. You can go back and look at some of my church on the Sundays, man. It's in there. 
Yeah. I record all them joints. I drop them every Sunday on my on my page. Somebody, some some people just need to see somebody who's confident and charismatic and not going to let the world sort of twist their arm. You know, like a lot of people feel kind of defeated and they, they could feed off of that energy of seeing somebody who's not going to just give up when the world feels against them. Bro, I've, I've, been, I've been getting tested like that all my life. So, you know, <clears throat> all I do is just try to come, hey, man, rub some of this shit off a little bit on somebody, man. If I can stop you, listen, man. I was, I'm always a firm believer in you don't always have to learn from your mistakes. Learn from other people's mistakes, man. Mm. That's the biggest lesson in life in general, learn, to be learn, honest. <clears throat> learn from other people's mistakes. Don't just always learn from your own because you're going to constantly be getting tripped by the same foot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So just learn, especially when somebody try to tell you, like, hey, man, you know, take it to heed. You know, I, I've been there before. I'm a person that I've never told anybody anything that I've never been through. Mm. Like, I can't tell you to go do something or be about something I've never done. How the fuck can I sit there and look at you dead in your face and tell you seriously, like, hey, man, jump off this fucking 150-foot cliff, and I ain't never even jumped off a 20-foot or a 2-foot. Like, right. I don't even know what it's like. You know what I'm saying? But I'm over here telling you to go fucking jump off all, and this is exactly how you do it, too. Right. Come on, bro. That, fucking does that. And people do it every day, I've, man. I've every been day. wowed in the past because I've, I've had conversations with people where I talk to them about, like, oh, so why, why did you uh, never get into drugs, for, for example? And they'll say... Mm -hmm. I read this book about this rock star and he got into drugs and I realized like real young or, or sometimes they'll say, you know, I saw my parents, I saw how my dad was and I realized how bad drugs were. And that shit kind of amazes me because I'm the kind of person where I had to learn every fucking lesson myself. I had to fuck up in so many ways and somehow make it past that, that when I see people who are able to learn from other people without going through it themselves, I'm impressed. Well, see, I was, I was already broke, mm. so... I ain't want to be that no more. That already that that hit me first off the dribble in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I wasn't already this spoiled rich kid. I didn't know what it's like to lose just yet. No, man. I already here you go. Young. Take it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be that no more. And then when it comes to like comes to drugs, I'm a very strong man. I have a very strong aura. Mm -hmm. You know? Like I don't I'm <clears throat> I'm afraid to, like I've said, I'm afraid to wake up, look in the mirror, and not recognize myself. I feel like that's losing control. Mm. So that's why I've never fucked with drugs. You know what I'm saying? I smoke, I drink, I don't do nothing, man. I don't do coke, I don't do Molly, I don't, I don't do none of that shit because I, I don't want to lose control of myself. Mm. That's all you have. That's the only control that you got, Adam. You don't got control of shit else, bro. In life, I'm sorry. Mm. Not of your house, not of nothing. Somebody else. It's, it's always a higher up. You know this shit. But the only thing that you, the, the, the genuine thing that you honestly have control of is yourself, man, is mm. you and what you do. Every step that you take, bro, foot in front of the other. A lot of people doing 20 years for some shit that they barely remember because they were fucked up. And they, they were let fucked that up, get bro. them into a position where they did some crazy shit. I can't even imagine how bad that must feel of being locked up doing all that time and knowing that you didn't even really make the decision to do that. You just got yourself into the position of not being able to make an intelligent decision. I'm locked up one time, right? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm in jail. I'm in CCDC. I'm locked up, Southern Nevada. And there was this Asian kid, man. I'll never forget it, bro. This fucking Asian kid. I'm talking about he was, you could tell he was smart. This kid's never been in, he don't, he's never hurt nobody. He's never put his hands on anybody. Nothing. Very, you know, Asians, <clears throat> he was, he's very well off. You know what I'm saying? You could just, his whole, his whole resume just spoke that. Mm. Just his whole aura even. And I'm sitting there and I start hearing about his story. And this kid was fucking drunk in his bins one night. Little rich Asian kid, man. In his bins one night, fucking faded. I don't know if he fell asleep at the wheel. He fucking hit the curb and hit seven, eight people at a bus stop. And like six, seven, all of them died, bro. I think either all of them died or, like, maybe one might have survived. One might have, and he hit all of them, bro. Hit all of them. Just in one night of drinking his kid, he's never had nothing else on his wreck, nothing. And takes fucking six of them in one fucking sitting. Damn, bro, you're beating a lot of fucking serial killers that just yeah. fucking one whop. Like, fuck, bro. And, it's, and you know what? I think there's a lot of people that have situations like that that, uh, it was just that night, like, changed their life, bro. Mm. One night changed your life, man. You could be fucking top of the world. Everything. Kid could have gone on to have the most boring, ordinary, normal, successful life 
Everything. Now he's Kids got that flourish, shit. and now he's got that shit. He's sitting with that shit. So it, life's a motherfucker, bro. That, mm. that lets you know that every choice is everything, man. Mm. Everything. I get tired of hearing people always fucking want to blame the next person for their problems. Let me tell you something, man. If you don't start blaming yourself, mm. you're going to constantly keep going through that, even in relationships. Oh, this person didn't work out for me. This person. Now you done found yourself in five, six, seven different relationships mm. and you're still having the same problem. When do you start to evaluate yourself? Right. Fix the things that you can control. Well, let me ask you that. How has been, how, how has dating been throughout your life and how many like serious long-term relationships have you had given that your profession, me, I would let think. Me, let me ask you something. Let me, let me ask you something. Let me, let, fuck all that. Listen to this. It's <laughs> noise. All that. It's noise. It's noise. It's noise. Uh, it's noise. It's noise. It's noise. The show. How? Let me tell you something. How serious can a relationship get? How much more serious does it? How, when a person says a serious relationship, right? And let's just say you had been with somebody for years in that profession, whatever. How serious do you want the relationship to get? That person goes out and does whatever the fuck they do, and they still come lay their head next to you, mm. and you accept it genuinely. How much more serious do you want? Honestly, hey, ask yourself that. So you're saying that that would that a woman going out and doing God knows what all day I mean, and listen, then coming and, home and to you, you that's more serious it and, it, and you accepting it. How much more serious do you do you get? And not the average person can accept that. Right. The average per the average man's heart can't accept that. I don't give a fuck the most manliest man in the world. <clears throat> it takes a very special individual, man. Uh huh. Beyond average. I don't know if I could. Could date you take a girl. that? If, could you take that? If she's off selling ass on Figueroa. Could you I don't take know. that? It's not about Figueroa, man. Come on, you know it's. <laughs> I just keep hearing you higher, mention that shit. No, I, I don't. Hey, I don't fuck with it, man. I don't know. I don't know about. You don't any like of that. that scene? No, man. Okay. Come on. I don't know exactly Come what on, that's bro. all about. No, fuck that. I've been seeing some videos on, on that's Instagram. That's videos. These girls are like butt naked get out some, here on the no, strip. Get some friends like me. No, yeah. no. Where are you gonna take me? Not fucking fig. Okay. We're not going there, all right? Yeah. <laughs> don't don't worry. I don't want to go there. I or got downtown. You. Hey, I got you, bro. Okay. Or <laughs> downtown, you. bro. Hey, man, like I said, it's how much more serious do you want it to get, man? She does whatever she does. She comes home. And could you accept that? Like you said, you couldn't accept that. No. You couldn't accept that. No. And, and it's not because it's just because your heart can't. You, you'd feel uh, you just feel challenged all the time. No, I want to know you, everything that happened to would, that pussy in the fucking, last six months. You would feel challenged, yeah. right? Not me. I don't want to know any of that. You don't want to know any of that. No. Why? For what? What does that do for you? See, that's some sh porn shit, bro. You can go fucking put in the search bar. Right. That, that that thought that you just had is like a thought you could put in the search bar, the search engine for porn. I, I mean, bro. I'm just, like, I'm worried. Like, I want to know what that pussy's did. I want to know where it's been. I want to know who smelt it, who dealt it. Listen, before I, <laughs> before I got involved, I don't care. But I'm saying like once you're in there, I mean, I want to know that she's not fucking some dude in the backseat of a car getting AIDS fucking six hours before she came home, right? Why would you, uh, why would you put your... Why would you even have any type of situations like that? I thought that was the it's hypothetical. It's 2021, era. bro. Okay. It's 2021, man. This is not fucking, nobody's heating up bricks anymore on the side of the street, bro, for a bitch to stand on to keep warm. It's 2021, bro. It's not, it's not, I mean, fucking back in the 70s. You heat up a brick? I mean, back in the 70s, bro, you know, it was, it was, it was said back in the 70s that, you know, in cold places, man, you know, that it snowed, you know, and bitches had to still go work, you know, they'd have the homeless people <clears throat> heat up bricks. You know, and set them out there so you know she could stand on top of them to keep warm, and the, and the heat go up her, go up her, her jacket. Wow. Yeah, man. A lot of tricks I didn't know about. Real game. I mean, that's just old school game, man. I mean, that shit don't go on anymore, man. That's fucking centuries. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you are you the last of a dying breed? <laughs> uh, my mindset, yes, for sure, mm. for sure, for sure. They're not gonna. Uh, I think it's over, man. I think, I think I'm, I'm being honest, man. I think if the, the ones that are in it, that's, that's locked in, are locked in. Who knows, knows, and that's it. Do you offer there's any no, kind there's, of, there's no more there's no more applications going out. Yeah, Nobody you, can apply. Do anymore. you offer any internships? Or are you trying to like raise anybody else up to understand this game? Like you no, know? man, no. Because you know what, man, I've I've seen before that you know a lot of people you <clears throat> you give somebody some some game, man. You give somebody anything for free. They go throw it in the closet and they never fucking use it. Mm. They never use it, man. You 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 charge them for it. They they take a second look at that shit. Mm. Does that make sense? I they take it. a second look at that shit. Not a lot, not everybody wants to pay. So you're not so meaning this. You're not gonna get it out of me for free. Right. 
you're not going to ever get it out of me for free. Uh-huh. Not what I've learned, not what I've seen, what I've been through. Adam, I come from some, some real shit, loved one. Right. A little deeper than skateboarding and BMXing. <laughs> Let me tell you. I feel you. It's a long way. I'm sure. It's a long way from skateboarding and BMXing, man. No, okay, I, I want to know more about your past, but I also want to just bring up this random clip because I was, I was trying to search a little deeper and see if I could find anything besides just software underbelly interviews, and I found a clip of you probably 10-plus years ago. Long-ass Mario Brothers chain. Very different aesthetic style. You look mm. a little bit more hip hop. Kind of looked like you could have been like signed to Young Jeezy or something, maybe. Yeah. No, man. Take shit. me back to w- w- this era shit, in your life. Man, I had, we was doing music back then. Oh, shit, really? Man. I didn't we was know fucking that. with it a little bit, you know. And like I said, listen, when I did music, my music, it was cool. It was cool. I, I, I did it because I wanted to do it. I never did it to sell anything. Okay. I never did music to sell it. I feel like that would be. Cross, cross hair in it, you know what I'm saying? Doing, trying to step here, step there. I did music just because I liked it. It was fun. Mm. Something I like to do, you know, it's just a hobby. Right. You know, everybody like motherfuckers go, you know what I'm saying? You motherfuckers go to the gym and fucking try to go blow up every fucking day, right? <laughs> well, you know, I'd go to the studio, you know, and that's where I could, you know, release. Right. You know, and it, you know what I'm saying? And at first it wasn't the, the best and got a little bit better, got a little bit better. And then before you know, you know, that that's just where I found my, my release. Mm. You know, we all have it. You get what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Right. <clears throat> when I was doing music, it was just something to just release, man. And, you know, just tell my story. Just nobody wants to listen. I'm listening. Right. So I did music. I didn't even know you were doing music at that time. I, the, the clip yeah. I saw, you were just sort of chilling on the block, talking to your homie or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I come from. Okay. Wh- but where exactly were you born and where exactly did you spend most of your I upbringing? was born, listen, man. I was born in Detroit, Michigan, man. Okay. My mother moved me out of there. Mm-hmm. These motherfuckers always say like, "Oh, he moved himself from the <clears throat> from Detroit when he was two. No, my fucking you fucking moron. My mother moved me from Detroit when I was probably about two years old. So I don't remember anything from there. You know, I moved straight to the West Coast. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We moved to Las Vegas to the West Side of Las Vegas. You know what I'm saying? So I stayed on the West Side. You know, over the it was it was shit. It was still it was apartments, but it was still farm. I remember it was still farmland and shit like that, man. Like desert. You right. know what I'm saying? So coming up. So uh, as I'm coming up, man, you know, I did a little bit of growing up there, you know, and a lot of my people who I start running into, like they just kind of took a liking to me, you know, and uh I start going to San Diego a lot. That was where I start touching. Like I just I'm, I start getting raised there. Mm. Not from parents or family, like just from all my homies. Them was my that was my family. So I got one of them in the building with me like that. That was my family. Like we from from young, you know, so I, I start learning that game. That's what I was taught. You know, I was taught to move fast, mm. you know, and really be about something. If you want something, go get something. There's no excuses, man. They, we Our, our little circle kind of treated it like the, the military. There, there was no gray areas, man. You either doing it or you're not, or you're, you're going to get knocked. Mm. You're going to get knocked down. It's going it's gonna to toughen you up. I got toughened up, man, coming up. And roughened up, you know, by all my people, just mentally, not physically, mentally. And that's what sharpened me. Mm. See, that's what I liked about it. Because it sharpened my mind and my abilities, my gifts. Not me just out here just trying to punch on people, Mm. trying to hurt people. No, sharpen my abilities, man, my gifts. Right. I'm, 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 I'm always going to make it, brother. There's a lot of people who, you know, their their version of themselves when they're young is that they just, you know, they're surrounded by people who are getting into stupid shit and not thinking about business, not thinking about actually I, building something You know what? Let me tell you something. I was, I was blessed. I was, I was fortunate for that, man, that, you know, some, some people, I got, to, I got to grow with them when they were starting. Mm-hmm. I got to grow with them. So I got to learn with them. And shit, man, here I am, shit, 17... Almost 18 years later, man, and I'm, I'm, I'm still breathing. So the shit had to have worked. Mm. I'm still here. I'm still healthy. I still got all my teeth. You know what I'm saying? The shit had to have worked, man. Right. It's just starting to change, man. It's, it's, it's evolving into something different, man. Some, some shit that it don't even need to be about, bro. I, I watch the hatred, man. We don't, even, we don't even spread love and positivity no more. You know, you got the you got the, the do gooders doing bad and the ones that they call bad trying to do good. Mm. That's why I tried to say earlier, can you call a square a circle and a circle a square? Like what is it? Do we got it backwards? Mm. Cause it seems like there's a lot of shit that's backwards today, Adam. Mm. 
lot of shit, bro. A lot of shit's backwards today. Make it make sense to me. Face fucking value. Make it make sense to me, man. I'm not a person that sits there, you know, and just, they, they can't put, beat me around the, the bush, man. I'm not, I'm not stupid. These, these, from these kids to even some of these adults, man, that act like fucking children. I don't know if it was the hormones. I don't know if McDonald's did this to a lot of people or what. Right. I don't know what the fuck happened, but I watched a switch in people, man. Something happened. There was a spark. I don't know if you noticed it, just like the change in people. From when you were coming up, from when you were young just to now, just the type of people that walk around, bro, it's got to make you kind of look at it a little bit differently. Oh, it's changed a lot. Yeah. It's changed a lot, right? Yeah. Am I tripping? Tell me if I'm wrong, honestly. Mm, no, the, the, the world has changed a lot. And I, I get it. I get it changes, man. But this isn't we're not talking about old people saying they don't like rap music. This shit's a lot deeper. You know what I mean? Mm. It's a lot deeper, bro, than that. There's some problems out here, Adam. That need to be resolved. That need to be fixed internally. Government ain't gonna be able to do it for us, bro. President ain't, ain't none of that shit. Gonna, we gotta do it together, bro. We yeah. gotta come together, man. Look past the skin color. Look past what anybody's doing, man. And let's come together, man, and figure some shit out. You feel like people are more divided now, yes, along identity issues, whether it's mm -hmm. like man, woman, racially, gender. You know, it isn't. It isn't. <clears throat> I don't really think it's uh, about race anymore. I think it's just about the haves and the have nots. Who's got money and who don't got money. Mm. That's what's going to separate you today. Mm. That's what's going to make you something. Not just you being, and you can have 50 different crafts and gifts and abilities about yourself. That's more than this rich man, but they're going to take him because he got the money mm. and they're going to leave you outside and you could have fixed everything that was in that building. Right or wrong. You could have fixed everything that was in that building, but they'd rather take this rich man because he's got money. That's what we're taught. Mm. We're taught to value the money. Right. Not the tools at hand. Right or wrong. But if you got tools that presumably will end with you having money, shouldn't you kind of trust the person that has money to think that, oh, well, their tools are probably pretty decent? What's our, what's, what's, let me ask you this. What's, what do you think the world's, especially us, USA, right? What do you think <clears throat> our main fucking problem is? Our, I'm talking about just as people here. We have a problem with instant gratification. We want now. We want now. We don't want to wait to work for it next week. If we don't want to wait a month, we don't know. Fuck that. I want it right now. Mm. Right or wrong? They want it right now. Instant gratification is a motherfucker. They don't want to wait for shit. Mm. You don't see marriages lasting anymore for 40 years. None of that shit. They barely last for 40 minutes. People get married, man. They're married for six months and they divorce. Come on, man. You don't even see shit like because people move fast. Instant gratification. They want to be in love today. They want a home today. They want kids today. But they don't want to build to it to have those things of understanding. You understand what I'm saying? They don't want to build to that, bro, at all. They don't. They just want it right now. Let me get it right now. And then when they start to look at each other like, damn, what the fuck did we do? Fuck up officially don't get the time to even know each other right when you said that your line of work cool. previously kind of feeds into that in the sense that you know you've always been providing instant gratification for people right it's like you know i you know what i provide reality Bringing a motherfucker back down to earth. See, when I was growing up, I thought that's when a motherfucker say, you know, when they when they tell you the real, it's because they care. Not try to sit there and sugarcoat the shit for you, man, and try to make a sweet booty for you. But really tell you what it is. Like, I'm telling you this because I, I care about you. You know what I'm saying? Not because, I, oh, let me just, oh, yeah, no, you're doing the right thing, but I know you're fucking up. No, if you're fucking up, I'm going to tell you you're fucking up. Mm. Don't you want the truth? See, everybody up, man, hates the truth but wants to be cradled by a lie. But when they find out that it's a lie, oh, let's be pissed. So, damn, it's a lose-lose situation, I guess, huh? All right. I feel it. It's a lose-lose situation, right? Yeah. Everybody always wants to be cradled by a lie. But once they find out that it's a lie, oh, it's a problem. Well, people hold on to their lies for, you know, like they'll do anything to hold on to the things that are sort of tethering them to the reality that they've created around themselves. I had a girl on here the other day who also has been on like a shitload of other popular hip hop adjacent podcasts. And yeah. the thing that has kind of caused her to go viral was that she basically was saying that she doesn't want anything to do with a guy who wasn't going to, you know, buy her a car, keep her in a nice apartment, et cetera. 
And on top of that, this is the thing that really went viral. You're talking about the girl that was in the blue dress? Jasmine, yes. She looked broke and very <laughs> thirsty. She looked very thirsty. Somebody needed to get her a bottle of water. Did you get her a bottle of water? Did you get her one? You didn't find her just a little parched? I don't think she had any Not water. All time. She's, here. <laughs> she's probably dehydrated. Had she had to have been. <laughs> Listen, and I'm a, listen. I don't like to talk about anybody, and I'm gonna keep this one brief on her because we're gonna keep it moving. But you know what? For somebody to sit there and say I got to get dragged out, like yeah, he's got to drag me out, out house, like yeah. that says a lot about your character and your tax bracket. Mm. That says a lot about you. So you know, I couldn't, I didn't understand that. That was yeah, that because was th th that was the thing that she was saying is basically that like once a guy gives her a house and a car and shit, then if they break up minimum six months they need to continue providing that for her which to a guy like me that really is just not into like tricking off on girls i'm just like are you fucking kidding me you seriously expect a dude to do that that's fucking crazy bro she'd wake up talking about hey can you toss me in the house can you toss me a brush downstairs you have to get it yourself i'm out right. i don't even live there no more yeah <laughs> i'm gone you she ain't even gonna be in a situation even you see, that's the problem. And there's stupid motherfuckers that'll let that bitch in. Excuse my French. But they'll let that bitch in today and let her do all that shit. Mm. Instant gratification just because she cute. Let her through the dough. Right. Instead of getting to know what you're fucking with. Mm. That's the problem with people, man. Instant, and she's going to get past a lot of people's doors. Yeah. And they're going to let her. <clears throat> yeah. Knowing that she's going to fuck it up and burn everything down. But still. Right. At the end of it all, fuck it. They'll worry about crying later. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's kind of the amazing thing I've seen on, on social media through her, a, through other people. It's just that it's a half a hoe. there's a lot of people who are a lot of guys, apparently, who get off on the idea of sort of like paying a girl's bills, even if they're not really fucking with her like that and, and just keeping her living a good life. I don't get it personally. And people will be like, oh, these guys are so rich. They're making a million dollars a year, et cetera, et cetera. So they, they like to do. I'm like, that doesn't. That doesn't change it. Like, if you have more money, you want to just can, the hey, no man. matter how much money I hey, had, I don't think I would take. Let me tell you in that. something, man. Let me tell you something, man. Some people, man, you know what's a what's a what's a lot to me and you, man, is a buffalo nickel to them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Some people going. Hey, man. They gonna play with their money. Right. You know, and you know, a lot of people see <clears throat> businessmen know that you gotta pay to play. Right. They don't want to sit see a, a real businessman that's got money that's got some real hard cold cash. He doesn't got time to go out and meet and greet the bitch and right. let's have a drink and let's do this. No, but listen, isn't that the fun part? Not for him. He's got t t time is money. Right. Time is money. They don't have time to be sitting there playing. You think motherfuckers that play on Wall Street, fuck that. He's sitting there banging the broad while he's on the computer sitting there looking at fucking different scores of this and that and this and that. Right. They don't stop, bro. They're not stopping through anything. That's what keeps them rich. But what do you want when you're pursuing a woman? Do you want to just actually feel your penis inside of a vagina for a couple of minutes? Or do you want to like actually go through that human process of meeting someone you know, sort of uh, convincing them to like you, you know, the, getting to know them, then choosing to have sex with them. Maybe there is like a, 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 a monetary element to a lot of these relationships. I get that. The human feeling is died. I know. And that's, that's the part that she seems to be like wanting to help usher in. She wants to make sure that all the girls know out there that you can the just be a feeling, robot. The human feeling died when these bitches start doing molds of their vaginas <laughs> and selling them. My girl has one of those, yeah. Does she? <laughs> <laughs> And I met I'm, a girl just, yesterday. I'm who, just being honest. I met like, a girl yesterday who was like, oh, I know your girl from from the mold of a vagina. I saw the sex store, store earlier. I'm like, awesome. You should have copped it. <laughs> Shouldn't it? Hey, don't you agree? That's when it died. Kind of like what you just said. You just said mm. that you like the human feel like, don't you enjoy the human, the, the human feeling of it? The overall. I know it. you like that because I see the way that you Fucking are. Love You're it. a communicator. Fucking love That's it. That's what you excel at. Fucking love it. You could talk a girl up out of her panties, Fucking right? Fucking talk them into her, man, backwards, man. Talk her into putting them back on backwards. You you have the thing that yeah. these, these billionaires that are paying for ass yeah. wouldn't be paying for ass if they could talk to a girl like the way that you do, right? Well, I didn't have all the resources. All I had was the time. Mm. So what I did was made my time useful. Simple as that. I don't think there's anything illegal to that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm. 
You know, people can hate that. You know, I say this. For motherfuckers to sit there and hate the game, you only fucking hate it because you can't do it. And I understand <laughs> it. I'm a man. There's Because you know how I know? It's because there's things that I know that I can't do that I see people excel at that I wish I could do. But... I'm not going to sit there and be like, fuck them or downplay that. I'm not going to be mad at you, bro, because you can ride a bike without training wheels and I can't. <laughs> like, no, get off the, he's not, you know what I'm saying, I hate you. No, if I can't do it, I can't do it. Respect that, man. Go excel. Hmm. That's the problem, man. That's where the hate comes from. People that hate on it simply can't do it. Hmm. Period. Go and teach yoga. Go and do something. Like, for real, go do something. Like, excel. Whatever it is. I don't give a fuck. Write a children's book. Do something. Have you ever heard of the term the, a reality distortion field? I've heard this said, uh, prior to uh, his passing about Steve Jobs where he was so driven, so motivated, had such big ideas, but he was also, like, really manipulative. So if he wanted you to believe in an idea that he was putting forth – he was so like manipulative and, and strong willed that he could kind of like convince you that things were however the fuck he wanted to to put it. And then like yeah. a lot of people would kind of like later on end up sort of realizing like, oh, I was sucked into his reality for a period of time. Then they would kind of, you know, but separate let's themselves. Be honest. By the time they figure that out, it's too late. Mm. By the time you figure out who you're dealing with, it's too late. Instant gratification, my man, it's poison. Mm. Well, anyway, I was just saying that to say that I feel like you're kind of like in the same boat as Steve Jobs there, where <laughs> th there's sure there's something about like the 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 I'm, reality that you're crafting here yeah. that it's like it's it's hard to pick at it like and, and I see it <laughs> I see it with Mark. Mark seems like he like no offense to him, but he seems like he's kind of in love with you. Yeah, no, this, like this. He, he's kind of got like a real man crush type thing going, where it's like he's he he loves getting sucked into this reality that you sort of put him into once you sit down in that chair yeah. i mean we just we sit down and we talk L listen man this is how me and you would kick it over a drink and a joint fuck the cameras yeah this is what you were going to get regardless that's best case scenario for these interviews is that people sort of like forget Bro, that they're even on camera you you were going to get this regardless mm. you know i, I want to ask you man what the fuck is up with the boy bezos giving up a, what do you give him a hundred million who do you the give dude, that to? Van, Van, what was the dude's name? Van, some from CNN. Oh, Van Jones? Is that, he gave him $100 million, bro. Right. And told him, you can do whatever it is you want to do with it. Must be nice. Van. <laughs> you haven't done enough. I don't know what The black done. folk need you. <laughs> we need you, man. $100 million, this man told you you can do whatever you want to do with it. Right. We need you. I'm trying to, yeah, I want to know what, he, what he's doing or what he plans what? on doing I'm not that. working at CNN. I think I'm that's out. probably part of the deal. If you just fuck off and go hang out on Bro, an island. Bro, I'm hopping with, on the desk, man. I doubt he just wired $100 million to his account. I bet he has to like come up with some ideas no. to make happen. No. Right? He told bullshit written in stone. He can do whatever he wants to do with the money. Wow. $100 million. I wouldn't want to put a hundred million, million in one guy's hands like that. I would give $10 million to 10 smart people. And then whoever seems to be performing the best, you give them a hundred right? million to this one man. Mm. What do you like for real, man? Why couldn't he come give it to you? He probably knows that I don't have any big ideas of what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't want a hundred million. If, if the, the I man, have to figure out listen, what to do listen, with it. Listen, listen, He told the man, listen, Adam, he told the man, literally, set in stone, you can do whatever you want to do with the money. Here's a mm. hundred million bucks. Fucking the owner of Amazon, like, bro, who, that's that's who owns that, right? Best, yeah, yeah. Bezos? Yeah. Hundred million dollars. Who the fuck? Did, like, who just, like, bro, you have nothing else to do, bro. Like, mm. what are you doing? But he has too much money. That's the whole thing with Jeff Bezos. He has, like, all the money in the world. He's like, the type of motherfucker, like, to take a whole bunch of Big Macs from McDonald's and build a mansion out of them because they get stale. Right. You know, like, they don't ever mold or nothing. Yeah. Y'all, hey, y'all ever know? Hey, you that's know what you do? You huh? create a Big Mac? Temple? I'd, I'd try to. Mm. If I had a hundred million at least once, I mean, wouldn't you get put in the fucking Guinness Books of World Records for that? Like, hey, this man built a fucking, he built a fucking skyscraper of fucking Big Macs. They don't mold, bro. They don't change. You could leave that motherfucker. Hey, try it. No, I swear I don't to God, that. we could Google try that. There's that no shit. way. 
Try it. I want you to do it by yourself, though, on your spare time. One time I checked into a hotel room and we opened up the the couch, (laughs) like the couch reclined or whatever. You could had a bed inside it and there was a Papa John's pizza inside it. And the whole thing was mold. It must have been sitting there for two fucking months. (laughs) So all I'm saying is that the ingredients in the Papa John's pizza are not so different from the Big Mac. It's got to be some mold. And we got our room for free. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, right? You hear, and, and y'all going to be, hey, don't even, I don't want to hear nobody laughing. You hear all these, like, hey, you hear all these motherfucking rappers, right, talking mm-hmm. about how many bricks, how many birds they done moved, right? Who's got more traps than McDonald's? Mm. I don't give a fuck what city you hit. I don't give a fuck what hick town, fucking smallest speck of dust. I guarantee you they got a McDonald's, bro. Mm. Nobody's out trapping McDonald's. McDonald's been trapping for a very long time. Remember me and you came up when they started at just one million served. Now it's billions. Right. Billions. Literally. You still hit McDonald's from time to time? Fuck no. No? It sure hurts my it. stomach, bro. I did I it a couple drinking, weeks ago. I stopped drinking soda. I stopped fucking eating all that shit, man. Like, you know. And I love that shit. Like, I like to go eat me a fucking Five Guys burger. I like, to, I like, I like shit like yeah. that. But like, I just noticed, man, I, I feel better. Uh, keeping that bullshit up out of keep mm. that bullshit up out of you, man. Yeah, you, you'll feel better. You'll be able to long. I'm 37. It's, 37. It, it, you're it's not over. gonna keep feeling good by accident. It's you're over. gonna have to sort of like take some of the bad. You got shit. a dad belly. Ah, uh, yeah. Did you get a dad belly. A little yeah. bit, but I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you work out? No. Uh, a little, a little. You're bit. in pretty good shape. A little bit. I yeah. Try. I mean, you, just a little bit. I ain't even fucking lie to you, bro. I just started. Really? You know why? I got a fucking, I got a movie coming up, man. I got to do a movie. Really? I got to do a movie in October. Wow. I got to go to Minnesota. How did this happen? Was it because of the interviews? Fucking, they found me from the interviews, bro. Oh. Swear to God. Like, it's fucking crazy. Like, I'm fucking, I, I got a business email. My, my, look, my boy Banks sets me up a business email. And from there, like, I start getting these emails, you know? So they, these, these people hit me up and they're like, we saw your we saw your interviews on Soft White Underbelly. They led us to your Instagram, and your Instagram led us to your business email. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, you know, I, I start getting into it or whatever, you know, and it's I'm not gonna say anything because you know it hasn't dropped or nothing yet. I don't want to put myself in any. I'm under contract for it or whatever. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So uh, I. I get these emails from them. I'm like, okay, they send me these. They say, okay, you're going to be playing this character or whatever. Okay, I'm cool. So they send me a mon- They send me a monologue. I do the monologue. I send it back. They do a callback. I do that one. Boom, I get the role. Mm-hmm. You know, so I've been trying to have to get, you know what I'm saying? They want me to be a certain way for whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I've just been working on it, bro. You know, this shit new to me. Oh, I'm so that's honest. part of why you've been trying to get in shape? Is yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I've it. been having to cut all the bullshit out, you know, just... Trying to stay focused, man, so I can I can get moving. Right. Trying to transition just a little bit, man. I just ordered Postmates while we were talking, just so you know. What'd you get? In case I looked uh, distracted for a moment. Just got a salad. <laughs> just reminded me. I don't want to be like, I don't want to get to the point where I have to go get McDonald's down the street instead Please of eating don't. something healthy, you know? No, go get you one, bro, so she, you can see what it does. And just leave it sitting. I've eaten it. <laughs> That's, no, just leave it you're sitting. just fascinated by the idea of what's going to happen to fast food if you leave it around just long enough. Just fucking leave it, bro. Your body's been bay, bro. Got a few Big Macs here. You got a fucking few cheeseburgers here. Fuck it. How do you feel about this comment? This is a comment I read on one of your interviews that I figured you'd have a pretty good uh, response to. Come on. I'm going to have my daughter watch this video to teach them what a predator sounds like. I mean, I guess because at least I'm a good looking one. What do you make? Teach your daughter how to avoid a good looking one. What yes, do, what, I don't fucking know. What do you what make you, of that? What, how do you, how do you feel about somebody who watches your content you know, and, and no, comes with a response like that? It, it, I'll, I'll be honest with you because you know what I, I really feel. I feel like she knows she's fucking raising a weak daughter. Mm. She's already weak. There's nothing that you've taught her. So you look like so you look at a man like me that's just gonna walk in and just all I have to do is fucking look at her like fucking Fabio or fucking like Prince on the bike at fucking Lake Minnetonka and tell her come on, mm. like get on the bike, like no, like you should have taught your daughter something just a little bit better than that. Obviously, I don't know. Mm. I'm, I'm not fucking get your kid, but get that, your fucking kid something. But that's kind of the the fear though is that you raise a daughter who ends up wanting a guy that sort of embodies what their dad their their dad's worst impulses because obviously there's good and bad in all of us but 
do you think do you ever think about that? Like you worry that maybe your kid like is going to want. I feel want... like any girl. Listen to me. I feel like any girl who genuinely has had their father in their life will not pan out like that. Mm. And I'm talking about even like on a on a separate, but like they don't have to be in the same house. Daddy could be raising her up over here. Mama could be raising her up over here. As long as the daddy stays fully involved, daddies. Listen to me. Little girls are d- daddy's girls. You got a daughter. Mm. You got a daughter? Yeah. You do? She's connected to you, ain't she? Fucking loves you, right? Only eight months, but yeah, she's getting there. But she just, she loves you. She knows your voice, man. She's she's touched you. She's been with you. You know what I'm saying? Best so, feeling in the world when you walk in the door and they go, bro, you are her best fucking friend. You are her light. Mm. You are her light for everything. She don't know nothing about no fucking no jumper. Mm. She don't know nothing about anything that you've done. All she knows is she's connected to you. Right. Treated as such. Like today, you know, I had all these interviews booked. Obviously, I'm just going to do it. But then my girl is like, I'm taking the kid to go to the fucking animal farm with my family members. And that did kind of like strike me as like, you know, I'm, I'm going to make X amount of dollars today that I wouldn't have otherwise. And I got to miss out on a little chunk of my kid's uh, childhood. Because you love her, bro, genuinely. Mm. Let me tell you something, man. I'm going to be honest. That's going to be your best fucking friend. Mm. There's nobody, I'm talking about not your girl, not the me, not anybody that you're ever gonna meet, bro. That's gonna be your best friend until your dying day, watch. Because there's a bond that y'all have and people have to understand that, like, man, c- connect with your child, man. When you're there for him from young, be there for him. But if you just work all the time, then you're missing out on a lot of that bonding time, Hey, right? man, you, so you know what you do? It's you make balance. sure, let me tell you something, so you know what you do for that? You make sure the minutes that you do spend with them, you cherish and you make sure mm. that they're fucking everything, bro. Yeah. They're everything. You're right. You can't be there. Mm. You can't be there. Nobody can just be there if you're working, mm. if you're busy. But be there, man. The times that you can, make them everything. Mm. Make them legendary, bro. That's real. And your daughter, listen, man, no matter what y- y- your wife says, no matter what any type of bitch you'll ever deal with in your life says, man, going on through life, no matter what, your daughter will know what it really means to fuck with you. Mm. She'll know who her daddy is, man. Can't nobody take that from you. I'm a black man, bro. For real. Even though my skin light, man, they try to take that from us. It be like that. So I'm just telling you, man, you you, you got some just, just stick strong. You ain't got no fucking problems. Just be there for it. But the weird part about it is that your kid, if you do a good enough job at making money and creating a safe, comfortable home environment for your kid, you're inevitably creating a reality where they're going to kind of take that shit for granted and not understand that you weren't there because you put in all these hours to afford them that then life. Then fucking bring her to work, bro. Yeah, you got to do some of that Bring too. her to fucking work. Tell her, baby, at least you know you was here because mm. I wanted you here. I could have had you at the fucking babysitters. Bring her to fucking work. You ain't doing shit. Mm. Smoking weed. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? You ain't doing shit. Bring her to fucking work. My girl's so paranoid about my kid even fucking inhaling air that has had weed. Okay, in. we get a humidifier. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? It's a simple fix. What the fuck, man? My See, girl's never going to accept that. Is this your that. first kid? Yeah. See, I got a few. So I, I've already man. been at the point to where I like, I know yeah. how to fix this shit. At first, I was scared. But then I start figuring out, like, man, these little motherfuckers going to have to figure this shit out. Right. Come on. We're rolling with the punches. See, I need your advice because you've done this We're a few rolling times. with the punches. Mm. You ever saw that fucking, uh, I think it's a Huggies commercial. I don't know what it was, but where the little kid, the first kid, they show the first kid and how she babies him. Second kid, she's just fucking let's go. Mm. Like, come on, man. You, you grow through it, bro. It was you like that for it. you, too? It was like that, honestly, bro. Mm. I've, I've been there. Listen to me, man. I, I've been there for my kids, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? As, as much as I can, bro. I've, I'm talking about really spent time with them, days with them. Right. You know, nobody else, nothing else, just with them. Right. You know, and just trying to, like, I've had my, my, my little girl and my son, I've had them with me fucking days old. Just by myself, like, having to take care of him, fucking, remember fucking his mom went out of town or whatever, and fucking, it was just me and him for a week. For, man, for a week, man, I'm in the shower with him, I'm fucking making sure that he's good, because I, I love my kids, man, like, ain't nothing I, would, I wouldn't do for him. Mm. Definitely. Well, how much uh, time did you do locked up, and uh, for what? Shit, man, in and out, man, if you want to, this is a long one, bro. <laughs> no, we can give a rough I never told, no, listen, bro, I never, uh. Cause even Mark, he like he never really asked me like where I went or 
how it all happened, bro. Like I was a. Uh, he just I lets you a, go off. Yeah. I, <laughs> he lets me make it my show. He does. He, well, I yeah. mean, that, that is like he stated that that's kind of his interview style. Is he likes to just sort of get the person going. And ideally for him, he just sort of gets out of the way and just lets them talk. You know, man, fucking um, I went to. I don't even remember what fucking year this was, George. Honestly, like it's, it's it was to me like I, I went. Uh, I don't know. You can pull me up. I'll, I'll let you pull me up later on. But I went to jail, man, in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Went to jail in Tennessee. What the fuck is that? Kendama. What? Nojumper.com. Uh, it's a Kendama. <laughs> that, I just remember that because I'm, I'm trying to keep it on the table because it just came out. And then I just remember that I didn't have it on the Bro, table. So I'm like, I brought I'm, it back. I'm like, this was a bit like just, ah, what the fuck was this? Like, yeah. it's just like a game changer. Yeah. Different vibe. It's like an <laughs> Easter egg feel. Listen, man, I fucking, I went to Tennessee, man. I got in some trouble. Uh, Williamson County. Shout out to Williamson County. You fucks. <laughs> Shout out to them, man. Uh, fuck. It was, it was, it was hell, man. I ended up going to jail, man. I was in there like they even put me on the news. Mm. I don't really want to talk about it. Like they, they put me on the news. It wasn't for no fucking kids. It wasn't for no fucking bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a fucking pod. When the pod saw my fucking face on the camera, like, they got the fucking ooing like we're in third grade. I'm like, this is a bunch of fucking grown men. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm but I'm down south, man, and I'm locked up. And I never did like the police, man. They took everything from me, bro. Like that was this is one of my first that that's, that was my first felony I ever caught, man. Was in Tennessee down south. I'm from the West Coast. Mm. I've, I've caught my first felony down south, bro. And I had uh, I got caught up, whatever. And uh, I'm in jail and. I bunker down thinking that, you know what I'm saying, I'm about to be up in here for the long haul, bro. And I, I had money already to, to get bailed out. My bail was 50,000, 60, 50, 60,000. I already had the money put up, man. I fucking couldn't get us. I couldn't get one more signature, bro. One more signature. You know what? I'm thinking that like, all right, well, fuck it. I can't get it. So I'm about to have to sit up in here, man. Like if, if you don't bond out around there, you blend in. Mm. They don't let you out. Okay. You got to go through all the court cases. This is down south, bro. You know, the people own the jail. Not the, not the government or the state. You know what I'm saying? The people. People own this jail. Like, man, this, the jail I was in, this man's wife would come in and cook for the whole jail. Wow. Like, for real, bro. In Williamson County. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that was always the story. Like, and this shit was kind of good, bro. I'm going to be honest. This shit wasn't no bullshit, you right. know? So, but I uh, I went to jail. Uh, I got out. My homegirl, one of my homegirls, bro, who used to sell me weed back in the day, she found out that I was in jail because it was passing around on social media. I'm in jail. I'm in jail, you know? So she had got my paperwork and signed it for me. She's like, all he needs is a signature? Yeah, all he needs is a signature. Man, she signed that motherfucking shit. They sent it up. It's a Saturday night, bro. Mm -hmm. They they call me to roll it up. It's like 730. I get out, bro. I don't got no cell phone. I don't got no money. I don't got nothing. I don't got nothing, bro. Nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I get out, and the bail bondsman lady gives me a ride. You know what I'm saying? I have one of my homegirls wire me like 250 bucks, bro. That's all I could grab at the time. I don't got no money. I don't got no cell phone. They took everything from me. Mm -hmm. Everything, bro. I don't got no car, nothing. So I go and uh, I get the 250 from the, uh, from the uh, MoneyGram or whatever, Western Union, whatever, from Walmart. I pick it up. I have the bail bondsman lady drop me off at this little bar. All I want is a drink at this point, homie. I've been in jail for 14 days down south with these niggas. They not even really fucking. They, you know what I'm saying? We, we two totally different type of people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We two totally different type of people, bro. So I, uh, I go and I'm having a drink, whatever. There's a little in-town suites up the street. I'm thinking I can go get a little room or whatever. You know what I'm saying? After I have me a drink, I go up the street, bro. It's the country. They closed already. It's the middle of the night. You know what I'm saying? Probably about 12 o'clock. Mm. It's the middle of the night. And I go and I say, fuck this, man. I'm going to go over here to this fucking, uh, I think it was a, what's that shit? A Waffle House? Mm. Waffle House over there, man. I go call a cab, bro, because I'm trying to find me a room now, bro. It's getting late. So I call a cab from this, from this girl's phone and I go get in the cab. I'm looking for a room over there in fucking, uh, I think it's off of Bell Road. All the shit sold up because it, it's in Nashville is where I'm at now at this point. And the Tennessee Titans games the next day, I get out on a Saturday night. So all the rooms are sold up. So I can't find no room. The only fucking place I know where to go, bro, is the weed man's house. That nigga's watching this shit, church. You know I'm telling the truth. I slept outside this boy's door and covered up with a floor mat. I put that on my kids, homie. 
And I was banging on the door the whole fucking time, bro. I'm banging on the door, bro. I'm just like, let me in. That's the only place I knew where to go uh -huh. was the weed because I smoked dro. Uh -huh. And that's where I was getting my weed from. And so he wakes up in the morning? He and never you woke up, bro. I, I swear to God, he never woke up. I got a hold of him the next night. He said he was in the room knocked out off of Xanax. Oh, that'll do it. He was it. asleep. Yeah, I'm, I'm banging at the door, bro. Even the neighbors wake up and open up the door like, motherfucker, he ain't answering. Right. Like, get your ass on. You're lucky you didn't get arrested again. So listen, bro. I swear to God, bro. Is that where this is going? I, I, no, but oh, okay. listen. Man, by the graces of God, and I got to tell this story, homie. I, listen, man, it's cold as fuck. I got a little flimsy ass fucking Hanes t shirt on. I, man, I had some fucking uh, True Religion corduroy jeans on Ooh. and some Vans. <clears throat> this is back when True Religion was, was, was in. Still hot. That's how you know it was Still <clears throat> hot, if you ask me. <laughs> so, man, so <laughs> I look, got some. I'm getting cold, bro, because by now it's, it's, it's getting a little cold outside. So I'm like, fuck this, bro. I got a little bit of money in my pocket. I'm like, man, I got to find some. I got to go find a payphone. I got to call a cab and try to like find a room again. Like, that's just my mentality. So I go down the stairs because he's upstairs. I go down the stairs. There's a fucking uh, trash can bin or whatever. Something told me to look in that motherfucker, bro. And I found a Liz Claiborne sage green trench coat and a roll pillow to a couch. And a roll pillow to a couch, bro. And it was untouched. It wasn't dirty or nothing. I grabbed that shit. I put the jacket on. I grabbed the motherfucking pillow. I went back upstairs and I went to sleep. Mm. I laid back down and I went to sleep in front of his door. Okay. I woke up in the morning. The little kids across the hallway was playing. It looked like they was about, probably about to go to church. Uh -huh. They woke me up. I rolled that shit back up. I lit up a cigarette, homie. Rolled it up. Went and put that shit back to where I found it because I felt like it was a blessing. Man, I, I knocked again. He didn't answer. I started walking through the apartments. Found this little, uh, I found this little fucking Ethiopian man that was about to do his little, because they doing cab drivers. You know, they ride cabs out there a lot. There's a lot of cab drivers on me so, at this time. So he's about to start his ship. I said, hey, bro, could you give me a ride over to Sprint so I can get a phone? Bro, he said, yeah, come on, let's go. All right, we go. I said, here, man, here, go like 10, 20 bucks or whatever, you know, for, for taking me. He was like, no, nah, because he could tell I had, I, had, uh, I had court paperwork on me and shit. Mm. He was like, no, nah, I ain't going to take you. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to take you for your money. You know what I'm saying? Just God bless you, brother. I appreciate you, man. I went over a sprint and I waited. It's Sunday. I waited for like three hours to find out they couldn't give me no loaner phone. I'm trying to get a fucking loaner phone, bro. So I at least called some of my people, anything, bro. He says, no, nah, we ain't got nothing for you. You got to go back to where you got your phone at because I had an iPhone 5 at the time. Mm -hmm. This is when all this shit happened to me, bro. I swear, man, I've I, I, I been fucked up. I've been in the game to where I've had to go through trials and tribulations, man. And I'm going to be honest with you. Th this story is very true because the man that I got some money from that day, them years ago, sitting in the room right now. So he know when I was, I'm, I had to make a phone call like, bro, just send me some money. Send me 250 bro. I, I started walking to Walmart trying to go get it. Like, I, I, man, bro, I, I done really been in this game, man. I done really stuck in this game. It never strayed me away. I never got shook or rattled by the moment. Mm. And I done been fucked up, bro. Police running all in my rooms. All that shit, bro. I done, I done did all that shit, man. Motherfucker ain't tell me shit. Not a motherfucking thing. So you had to stay in Tennessee uh, to catch the until I Until felony? my court date. Until my court date was done. Because I got out. I went and got my court date. I had to be the court because kept, they kept putting it off. So it took me about a year to go back. But I went back and got my sentence with four other co-defendants. All, wow. co all the co-defendants that I had, man, was females. Nobody told. Really? Nobody told, man. So you were good. You beat the felony. Nobody told. And I was the first person they called up to get the whooping. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, I got the felony. Oh, you did. But you know what I'm saying? Just to, I had to go stand up. I had to go take my licking. Uh -huh. You know, they wasn't letting nobody go from that. Wow. You had to get something. That's all that they, they really wanted. They just really wanted because they were fascinated. I think it fucked them up that they were fascinated that I was as old as I was and I had no Fs. Mm. They wanted to give me one. Mm. They wasn't really giving a fuck about the jail time. They just wanted to give me one. Just, let's just mark him. Let's be the first ones to mark his ass. Right. Because then you can't carry a gun, so you're basically fucking... They, they took it all from me, man. <laughs> you know, if, if, if you get a felony, then you can't have a gun on you, so then you're basically a sitting duck where somebody can come and do whatever. Or they can run up in your crib and catch you, and boom, you got another felony, you're going away. They, they took it all from me, bro. Mm. All from me, man. But I'm still moving, and I'm still here today. So that was the biggest situation Yeah, they came with. back, and they extradited me, too. Dropped another charge on me. Wow. Came back and got me, bro. I got into a fucking car accident, bro, in Vegas. For the first time in my life, I called the police to get a fucking uh, statement, bro, for the for the, for the for the accident. You know what I'm saying? It's just a normal accident, bro. The bitch walks up to me and tells me like this. She runs my name. She says, hey, 
She says, can I search you for any weapons? I'm like, damn, this is a fucking traffic stop. Like, we just got into, I just need to get the insurance because I had a rental car at the time. It was a, but it was a foreign rental car. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to get the, you know what I'm saying, get the shit for it so, you know, I could be cool and they don't charge me. Man, she walked up on me and she was like, hey, can you turn around for me for just a second so I can just feel it? I'm like, man, what's this about? Man, she put my hands right behind my back. She's like, you got any embezzlement charges? Embezzlement charges, straight up. And what Tennessee did was they came back because they saw the first charge wasn't going to stick. They came back, re-indicted me for a money laundering charge, category B. Wow. They sent me up, bro. I sat in jail for 15 days, and then they shipped me up on a bus for seven days. Fuck. Yeah. I got out three days later on the same bond. Fucking retards, bro, on the same bond. They took me all the way up there. The fucking detective says, oh, well, I didn't know they was going to bring you up here. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did, you fucking Mark. Mm. Yeah, he did. He, he knew it. He knew it. That's why he did it. But he was mad because when he arrested me, I was talking shit. So, you know, it just kind of just up the ante because he, he saw it. Down south, it's like they're playing a different game. They play a man. whole different ball game, bro. Yeah. All different ball game. At least, in, at least in LA, you know that the cops are like kind of overworked and they, that they, it, it's hard for them to really pay attention to small things, it feels like sometimes yeah. because they got so much to deal with. But if you break the law in like a small town down south, I mean, they're going to fuck with you. Well, the people, you have to think about this, man, down south, and I never knew this, right? The people own the jail, it's right. the people. It's not the state. It's not none of that. No, a specific person owns this jail. They fund this the jail. Private per, uh, prison private, debate. Yeah, yeah, private jails, man. They're all through the South. Mm. They're all through the South, man, just making money, making money, making money. You have to think about it, man. For To, to house an inmate a day, man, it's 300 bucks mm. a day. It's a cash cow, man. It's a, it's it's a business. Crazy. Yeah, it's a business. Sheesh. That's just big business. Yeah. Why do you think them southern states, man, they be so rich? That's a man. You go check their jail cells, man. Them motherfuckers full up. Right. Full up. Man, imagine 300 a pop a day. Yeah. Motherfuckers have been there serving years. Some people serving life. Yeah. It's pretty crazy, too. It feels like now when you hear about somebody getting a long ass sentence, that there's like a better chance that they're going to do a very small percentage of that sentence. Like they're just kind of letting people out a lot more freely at this point, right? I think that, uh, I think it's still racial a little bit with that, man. Mm. Don't do like I'm asking. Do you do, do you think that I'm, I'm gonna ask you? Because I, I, I like talking to you. I'm gonna be honest. I like I like talking to you. Do you do you think that it is a white like? Do you think it's still racial when they go to sentence a man? Like say a white man and a black man, they did the same crime. Do you think they're gonna get the same time? I mean, Honestly, it probably depends on the judge. I would I would think. I'm sure man. there's some judges that have a real prejudice. I don't know. Do you think a white man, if they a white man and a black man does the same crime the same time, the same judge, mm. the same judge, do you think that they would get the same fair shot? I mean, it's just hard to say. Like, not. I mean, I, I don't know enough about how this bullshit, typically Adam. plays. I don't know. I'm That's not. Bullshit. I, haven't, I haven't been involved That's in the court bullshit, system that much. But you know what you feel. He know what he feel, cause he come on. He know what he feel. It's my partner. He know what he feel. We gonna bring that shit out. I've heard about. We a gonna lot bring of, that shit out. I've man. heard about a lot of racial disparities in sentencing. So I mean, I'm, I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt that there definitely there's some, there's some differences. <laughs> Took you a second to think of that. But one. I just don't want to. I don't want to like <laughs> indict the system on that specific thing without really knowing that much about how that usually goes down. To be yeah. honest. Yeah. I mean, if you've been in court, you've seen it. Mm. I'm, I've been very, very lucky in that regard. Very. Yeah. <laughs> when I think about all the laws I've broken and the fact that I never got caught, and I think about people who, like, you know, break the law a couple times and they get caught and they end up doing eight years or whatever, it's pretty, you know, there's just so much luck. I'll Every, say this. It's so much, it's a gamble. There's no, there's no future. And I want people, I want people to, this, um, mark my words, this, this is me. Mm. Take this. There's no future in being a horrible criminal. Mm. Remember I said that. There's no future in being a horrible criminal. Mm. Do what you do because you're good at it. Don't ever do it. Like I'm saying, I'm not saying I'm doing anything. I'm not saying you're doing anything. But just to people out there, like, don't be a fucking horrible criminal. Mm. You're going to do something. Be good at it. Be be smart at it. Don't be a fucking a fucking dipshit. Don't be a fucking person in it that's just fucking dibble dabbling. You you don't even really know what's going on or happening. Nothing. Not just 
stay away. And if you're a criminal, you should be making a very deliberate effort to not get famous, which is the thing that a lot of people seem like they're dealing with because you hear about people all the time who get caught up because they got a million followers on Instagram and they were yeah. basically airing out shit that helped the cops put the, the case together. Well, it's very easy when you sitting there, man, and you flashing guns and money and shit like that that's unaccounted for. Right. You can't do that, man. You think they're not watching? Yeah. They're watching at all times, bro. You gotta, you gotta be, be humble, man. Be humble. No, but but you know what? There are people that jumped off the porch just a little too soon, start having money, and don't know what to do with it, man. All the time. Dude, be honest. How many people? Listen, there's so many people that you'll watch sit there and blow the bag, and you'd be like, "Why are you blowing all this money, mm. bro? They never had it before. They don't know what to do with it." Mm. A person that that's why you got to be able to go through it to where you have it, lost it, and have it again. You'll respect it. Have you ever, throughout your life, have you ever been at a point where you had a shitload of money and then you fucked it up? A fucking course. <laughs> a right. fucking course. I'm talking about, bro, A, hey, just, but it's, it's, it's learning curves, man. Mm. See, I was, I was more fortunate to do all my fucking off young. Mm. That's why I'm glad at, like, okay, I got in the game young. I started seeing, because I never had shit, and I'm, Hell yeah, I wanted shoes. Hell yeah, I wanted clothes. Hell yeah, I wanted cars. Hell yeah, I wanted jewelry. Hell yeah, I wanted some shit. Never had that. I'm seeing motherfuckers having that. I want that. I gotta have that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't wanna, and that's no hey, nothing like where I wanna take it from. No, but I have to go get that. Mm. That's what I see. See, when I was coming up, that's what it looked, it, 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 to me, it looked like uh, that's what made you the man. That's what made you something. It looks like that's what made your life easier or made it look like you were having it easier. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I indulged on that. I'm glad I never really got too caught up in that. You never fucking did. No. You never <laughs> I still don't get it. I still am like kind of confused about all the, the flexing shit. It's a little, a little yeah, foreign to me. Hey, bro, you know, I've noticed now, you know, I was taught back then, but I never really noticed, man, uh, less is more. Mm. Right? I, ain't, that, ain't that something you would want to I say? always wanted to make money so that I didn't have to have a job. And that was kind of the whole thing for me. I just wanted my freedom. Because yeah. I had so many things that creatively I was interested in that I wanted to pursue that I always figured, you know, if I can just not have a job, then I can pursue these things. And I know that one of these things is going to turn into something eventually. Well, the game that I came from, we were artists. Mm. You know, we were artists. Right. You know what I'm saying, man? I, I Shit, this shit was an art. After a while, man, because it, you start to see everybody trying to play it, bro, and it's not its not even being played even 1% the right way, man. Mm. You fucking see all these dudes on, because, you know, you'd be sitting there with your family. You guys turn on the fucking local news that night like, hey, because you just turn on the TV and then you see some fucking dude's fucking face pop up and it says fucking sex trafficking and what he did to all these girls and this and that. That shit don't got nothing to do with the game, man. Mm. If it ain't by choice, it ain't about shit. Mm. It ain't about shit. But you know what I notice? And men that sit there and go deal with little girls and shit like that, you know what that is, man? I'm going to be honest with you. You know what that is? No game. Ugh. No game. It's easier to move a little girl because you know what? All she wants is a cell phone, her hair done, maybe her nails done. She don't want shit. A grown woman, when you're dealing with her, she's going to want some things. Mm. Give a fuck what situation you put her in. I've interviewed so many girls on here who basically ended up just getting sex trafficked by some fucking manipulating dude. That's weird to me, bro. When they were bro. like 14, 15. That's weird to me, bro. Because it's, because let me tell you something, it's lazy. It's easier to, uh, a grown man, right. it's easier to do that than go out and go get your ass a grown ass woman. Because see, she's gonna have questions for you. Yeah. And you gotta have answers. They don't wanna have answers. It's easier, a little girl ain't gonna question you. She only wants a little, she don't want much. She's never seen much. Mm. She's young. So it's easier for them to go in and, and be, pursue that versus going and getting a grown woman. You got to really do some talking for it, do a little bit of walking for it. You got to make some shit happen. It strikes me as you seem like a person who has a bunch of integrity and a vision in an arena where there's not a lot of that. <laughs> there's just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a field that probably I would think largely attracts scum. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just not, you know, at least based on what you say, you're just not really that kind of guy. No, bro. It's very out of the ordinary. It, listen to me, man. When I was coming up, we were supposed to be clean. Mm. Clean gentlemen. 
You're a gentleman first. Don't let nothing sweat you. You don't let nothing make you have to come out your character, man. Mm. And if it did, it was never saw. Just like a lady being a lady, right? You know what I'm saying? Certain things, if they did, they did behind closed doors. They never did that shit out in the streets. I'm accustomed to that. Mm. Certain shit you don't do out on the street. But see, these motherfuckers think that that's just what everything's about so they can world star the fucking shit. Mm. Oh, let's put everything that we want to put on here, put on there. No, man, that ain't the fucking way. That's how you get your ass caught up. Dummy. Mm. Dumb, dumb. You said that you... Uh, you've you've competed in and won the players ball. What what is the actual criteria that they sort of end up judging people based on for that? Not being the strongest man, not sitting there trying to have. Listen, man, you can come up in there with a million dollars. You can come up here with this, come up in with that. But who knows you? Mm. you Got to be around. You right. ever had to been down? That's all I can really say about that one. You got to really be down, man. Mm. Everything is it's almost everything about you got to check out. Everything, not just your bread, not just your money, and not just your honey that you came with. Everything about you got to really check out. Mm. And if it don't, don't worry about it. So you can't just appear out of thin air and just have some cool clothes and a a whole lot of job talking? Fuck no. They're not going to allow it. Fuck no. Well, I can't say job talking. They're what? laughing at me. And jive talking. Jive talking. Do people still jive? say that? Huh? <laughs> he was a jive dick. talking individual. You're a dick. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I would say you're you're a jive talker. Am I? Hell yeah. Can I be a real talker though? You could be that too for sure. Yeah. Can I honestly? Don't bullshit me, bro. Jive is a weird. Don't word. bullshit me. I'm looking at you in your face. Honestly, okay, I'll be the jive talker. I'll take that part. I'm a gentleman. I can take things. Uh-huh. I can take it and dish it. Right. But can I be a real talker as well? For sure. Maybe a little bit realer than you? Mm. Oh, all right, no, there I'm we pretty go. real, man. All right, yeah. All right. <laughs> I love you, Adam. You're a good dude, I love man. You too, I like bro. being Appreciate here, it. man. This shit is, hey, hey yeah. it's cool. Listen to me, man. I uh, be, Before anything, before we go, before anything, I just want you to know, man, I, uh, I appreciate you for opening your platform to me. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you didn't have to, but you did. It's love. I'm opening mind to you. Mm. And, uh, I hope we got more endeavors in the future. We should talk. We should. Yeah. We fucking should. I could see sure. Be. I, I, I could think see the so? people really fucking with you in the long maybe, run, man. Maybe, yeah. You just need a little bit of infrastructure to help put you in front of them. Think you can? You think you can help me? Of course. Can you give me some game? Oh yeah. Can I'm I gonna... give you some? Listen. Can, yeah, there it goes. You, you, can I give you some? You in the streets? But is can like I give me you some on the internet? All right then. Mm. Let's put them together and see if they can be butt buddies. <laughs> wait, hey, oh, wait, oh. <laughs> we'll send them on along and let them go be I, butt buddies. I, I could just hear AD screaming pause in my ear as, as he said that. Yeah. Fuck that, man. No, let no, the no. motherfuckers go be butt buddies. Mm. Talk about me and you. Let's make something real. It's That's good. good. I like it. It's good, love one. For sure. I appreciate you for everything. Can I still get that cigarette? You want one? Honestly. <laughs> Do you really yes. need one, bro? <laughs> Fuck, bro. It's like candy, bro. It's like candy? Yeah. I don't eat candy like that anymore, but I'll smoke a cigarette. Here, bro. Oh my God, cool. Yeah. My girl. You know where you know where I got these from? You know when I started smoking cool blues, honestly? No. Cool blues. I started smoking cool blues when I was fucking maybe 14, 15. How long you see me with a pack of cool blues? Been a minute, huh? So I was a young kid, man. I remember a dude in my grandmother's apartments, bro. He was a, I called him Porch Man because he always used to sit on the porch and he would porch smoke man. cool. Yeah, Porch Man. What up, Porch Man? He like used to that. fucking sit up there on the porch and he would walk with a cane. And he would sit up on the porch, man, he smoked cool blue 100s. And the way this dude used to pull on him, man, because I smoked cigarettes, man. I ain't going to lie, bro. I used to fucking go steal them. Mm. And he always, he, I was so young, bro. I was probably like 12, man. He knew I smoked. And he used to throw them down to me, man. And I got accustomed to him. You want to hear a cigarette story? Talk to me. I worked at the the grocery store, Market Basket, where I grew up um, when I was about 15, I think is when I started working there. And I started to realize that my best bet for stealing shit that was actually worth something out of the grocery store, because I would take, you know, the little microwave pizzas and the little microwave hamburgers, shove those in my pants on the way out of there so I'd have something to eat when I got home. I started to realize that the girl who worked in the booth where they had the lottery tickets and the the cigarettes, that that was where I could actually get something that would turn into money, you know? Yeah. 
So I started to figure out that when the girl turned around, this was like fucking 1997. They didn't even have cameras in this fucking area where all this shit so was. So you were bootlegging cigarettes. Well, I was reaching in when Let's she wasn't say, looking and bootlegging? yanking a bunch of fucking lottery tickets out. So I had that going and that Ooh. was turning into money. I was feeling myself you, about that. You. But then See, I started. See, this is a mini soft white underbelly we're doing right this now. This is this is my this criminal is mini, history. This is a mini. This is a mini soft white underbelly. Hey, I'm Mark. I'm interviewing you. Okay. And then you do? I started to figure out that I could actually jack the cartons of cigarettes too. Yeah. Yeah. My dumbass starts stealing cigarettes that don't even have a fucking filter on them. So then I bring them to school trying to sell them to kids. Those humps. They're like, I don't want a humps. fucking pack of camels with no them filter. Humps. See, I knew humps. I said, I knew what them was because we were stealing all them shit. I didn't know nothing about hey, cigarettes, I, bro. bro. Nobody bro. wanted it without I'm the gonna filter. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest, bro. Me and my cousin, we were young, bro. We used to go up. Hey, I don't give a fuck, bro. We were young. I don't care. This is... We would go up into 7-Eleven, and I think this bitch fucking knew. She would turn her back, and you know all the cigarettes that'd be up there at the top? Mm. Me and him just start fucking grabbing <laughs> We fucking young. But she let us fucking do it, bro. We're right. fucking 13 years old. Like, she knows we're just trying to make some money. Like, she, this, this lady used to fuck with us, man, for 7-Eleven, man. Shout out to her. I ain't going to give no location, man, but her family owned that shit. And shout out to her because she let us fucking get them shits. And we was fucking, man, whatever we needed to do, bro. Hell yeah. We was moving, man. Young, bro. Shout young. out to anybody enabling petty crime for a, to help a young man get his fucking you, operation you look off like the you ground. You stole a fucking steak, some hot links. You tried to throw a barbecue one day? I know you did, bro. I can tell, dog. He done did it before. Okay, Mark, Mark, you're encouraging me to tell more bad stories about myself. Can I tell you about a humiliating experience with the police when I was a kid? Mm -hmm. I had just gone vegetarian, I'm 16. And so I go out vegetarian to vegetarian at 16. Right? I know, I know. I Bro, a lot I'm of bad influences honest. in my life. I'm going to be honest. You probably have to be prehistoric, like, of the of the vegans. Yeah. Like, for real, like, just to kind of, like, just Late 90s, cut it not out. A lot Bro, of them. Yeah. nobody. I did, I did four years. Who was? Who was that, Bro? That know. was a tough fucking time for you. That was a tough fucking time for him. It's a lot of bands who influenced me that, to I, be won't, that I won't like, waste your time with. Think about this. But. In the early 90s, who was that? <laughs> late like, 90s. Late 90s? Even late 90s. Who was a fucking what? Vegan? Vegetarian? I was vegetarian at the time. Anyway, Still but, the same shit. So me and my friends go out, and I get a salad because I'm a new vegetarian. I'm like, oh, I guess I got to start eating salads. I get a salad. I can't finish the whole salad. Mm -hmm. I still have the salad in my backpack, right? And But we're riding bikes around. The cops pull us over. And they start searching my bag and they find the salad. <laughs> and this fucking cop is going through the whole set because he assumes that the salad has to be a front for me hiding weed, which is why. I don't know. There would be salad dressing on the weed. You don't want that. Because but, who was a vegetarian back then? That's why he was searching. That I don't leg. doubt the cop's logic. He was right to doubt why I had a salad in my backpack. Who the fuck has a salad in their backpack? He probably, hey, what if they would have like charged you with like using a salad as a weapon? I mean, or like as some like type of malicious play. There's a lot of food like, I would rather real, use like, as a weapon ate, than a salad. Like, the police are crazy. Like they would have like used that salad against me. Like I was gonna use it in a malicious way. Mm. Like I was gonna like I was defacing a salad. Yeah. You ever? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Who does that? Like for real? Like I was defacing a salad. It depends how creative the cop is. He could come up with something like that. Bro, they do it, bro. Yeah. I like I was defacing a salad, and I just. No, he, he picks shit off that he could have told them that he didn't want. Mm. You like That's that real. shit? I can tell, like, the way you're not looking bad, at it. Man. Like, is it not bad, honestly? It's my, smooth. My girl's mom smokes these, and I never even think about she taking She probably one. smokes a green pack. Maybe. I don't know. But she got the cool. She, she, but she switches it up. She'll have different menthol cigarettes. Newports. She'll have some Marlboros. Oh, she don't give a fuck. How she just fuck bounces you, around. She, she probably drinks wine. 59 years old. Yeah, she drinks probably. wine. She's, how are you this old and you're just switching up diff, she different brands every time? Yeah, That's she, they don't care me. at that point. That's crazy to me. They don't care at that point, bro. Yeah. They just in it for the ride. Yeah. I don't know. They're just in it for the ride. No, I'm saying for like the, the, the high and the roller coaster, they're just in it for the ride anymore, bro. They don't, they don't care what gives it to them. Yeah. <laughs> well, I refuse to buy cigarettes, so I'll take whatever they give me. So I've tried them all. I've been around the block, the sick so block. So you won't buy them? No. So what do you think about, like, that? maybe that's where she came from? Who? The person you said that like, she doesn't. You know, she's she tried enough brands that she yeah. wants to switch it up. Because like, she didn't buy smoke. When I go to the 7-Eleven, if I'm in a candy mood, which yeah. will only occur very late at night when I'm very, very high. But yeah. if I was in the candy mood, I'm not going to get the same candy every time. Switch it up. So I get it. You, you switch up candy? You like candy? I mean, I do. I, uh, you don't get no pimples or nothing on your face, do you? Not from the candy. Your face doesn't no. get oily. No. Well, yeah. I mean, my face gets oily if I don't like shower and wash it, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, nah, <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> fuck that, man. Your shit be sitting there dry. You got to leave that candy alone, bro. Hey, let me tell you something. I, I'll tell you this. I, I guarantee you, you'll be able to tap into your third eye more if you kind of leave just more of the sugars alone, just mm. shit like that alone, bro. You can still live right. Yeah. You don't need it, man. Me and candy is like most people with like drugs. You know, I'm trying to, I, I have to keep it out of my head every day. Stop having an addictive personality. Yeah. Yeah. That's real. Stop the bullshit. Those, those soft ass cookies by Didn't the 7-Eleven checkout. What did we talk about earlier, right? We was talking about like self-control, right? Yeah. Don't lose control of yourself, bro. I'm trying. You're going to let, you're going to let candy dictate to you I'm what, sort of what you do. I'm waving around in there. You don't, you don't fuck with sweets? Uh, sometimes. Okay. But when I want to. Just when I know sure how to cut them. But, but listen to me, I know how to cut them off when I want to. I control mm -hmm. that. I don't. Let it control me because I just like it. Right. You can't do that shit, bro. See, that's the problem with us is instant gratification. You want what you want. You don't care how bad it is for you, do yeah. you? No. You don't give a fuck how much you eat. Even though you know a Big, a big Mac's going to go stale in your stomach, you'll still eat that shit because you went and ate it last week. Put that week. out of my mind. You fucking ate it last week, so you know that you need to get that shit gone. Mm. I'm glad that you got Hey, Can I be honest with you? Sure. I'm going to be real, bro. Real as fuck. I'm glad you got rid of that cage. Oh, yeah? I don't... Yeah, I didn't like that. The cage and the fucking locks and shit like that. Like, I didn't... Yeah, grab that Postmate for us. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like the cage and shit like that, man. Yeah. Like, we don't... No, we didn't need to... I see all these people making their podcast studios look so professional. And yeah. I kind of like the idea of ours looking ratty. Ratty, but still classy. Yeah. But this, like is, this, this is like on the side of the construction site. You see all the, the uh, posters up on the wall and I shit. I say this, man. We are uh, we got jumpers with no jumper. Mm. That's why I, I like when you named it no jumper. You know what no jumper means to me? What? It's people who probably ain't never shot a three in their motherfucking life, but we balling. That's exactly what it moving. means. Yeah. I like when no jumper stands. Like, for real, bro. Like, I took the concept, and I ain't ever talked to nobody, but I was like, man, no jumper. What does no jumper really mean? That's a motherfucker that's really shooting out the fucking gym. Well, because it comes from the Gucci Man lyric where he says, 95 Air Max because I'm a dope runner. Yeah. Balling like an athlete, but got no jumper. <laughs> yeah. That's what we took it from, yeah. <laughs> I like that, my yeah. man. You, like that? you you, 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 you take it somewhere, for yeah. real. Yeah, we're, we're going to take it somewhere. Yeah. Give your, your shout-outs, what your last words to the audience before we uh, wrap this. I say this, uh, I hope to be able to just come back. Oh, yeah. I just want to come fuck with you. No doubt. Bring a couple more bottles, a few more things for us to smoke and have a few laughs. Tacos, listen, I just want to do uh, tacos and a couple laughs with you. That's it. I, I like that, bro. I, I like you. I like, the, I like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? I like what you're trying to promote because if it's, if it's bullshit, I notice that you get on it. Mm. I like that about you, and that's why I came. If you felt like it was some bullshit, church, please get on me. Mm. And if you feel like there's another time that you need to get on me, I mean, bring me back. I'm here. I'm always here to answer your questions. Well, you got my number. Hey, man, you got mine. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sharp, I appreciate you, man. Hey, man, I fuck with you, church. Much fuck love, with dog. Me, man. It's love. Sharp, no jumper. Check us out on YouTube and Patreon. We really yeah. trapping out the Patreon, bro. We got hey, girls man. shaking ass, all kinds of wild we shooting, shit. Hey, man, let me tell you something, man. On this no jumper, we shooting out the gym. That's real. No jumper. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, Patreon, iTunes, all that shit. Like, comment, subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate all y'all. And we're going to have Sharp back. Church. Church.